I'm Cheryl Waters. You've got it tuned to KEXP. We are listener-powered radio at 90.3 FM in Seattle, streaming worldwide at kexp.org. We want to thank all of our listeners for making these wonderful sessions possible. And I have been waiting for this day for many a moon. Sasami, live in the KEXP studios and with a new album, Squeeze. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm so great. And I'm so happy that you're able to be here with us in the flesh, in person. It's a miracle. It is a miracle. Every day is a miracle. That is so very true. But today, extra miracle. Well, I cannot wait to hear these songs live. Squeeze, wow, what a record. And I can't wait to hear this band. We'll chat at the end, but why don't you play some new songs for us? It's Sasami, live. We'd be honored to play, (laughs) thank you. Sasami, live on KEXP.
business You turn stocks up on innocence Why do you keep the digital me up, put me up, put me up
This song is about nature, humans not destroying it, finding our place in it, looking for something good in the human spirit, in the human soul.
wow. <laughs> That's all. Just wow. <laughs> We're <Hey>. done. <laughs> bye bye. That is incredible. Sasami live on KEXP. Songs from the new album Squeeze out on Domino Records. And that's like a sampler platter of <laughs> pretty much everything that you're capable of as a musician. I mean, you switch from new metal to psych folk, indie rock, dream pop. There is so much going on and showcases your many, many talents, this new record, Squeeze. Tell me about the drive to showcase all these different sounds in one record. I think that everyone carries a lot of multiplicities within themselves. And I think that um, because art is this like fossilized version of whatever emotion or thought you're having at that moment, people tend to like impress that definition onto you. Um, but I think we all carry a lot of different moods and emotions and vibes. And so this um, album was just made at a time where I was, you know, locked at home and spinning out and experiencing all of them and not just experiencing one of those kind of feelings. So yeah, I just created an album with a, a different sonic palette than the last one, but it's still the same painter. It is Mwah. still Sasami. And I understand that not too long before the lockdown and right before you left for an idyllic retreat, not too far from here, you went out to see a new metal show and you weren't <laughs> even sure you wanted to go because you were getting yourself in that kind of, you know, retreat mode, but you went and it blew your mind and so much so that we have those band members here with you today giving a new meaning to the term hair metal. Yes, exactly. I um, was going to Hedgebrook, this really amazing songwriting retreat that I was really lucky to get nominated to go to um, on Whidbey Island. And I was heading up there and I decided to go to Five Star Bar in downtown Los Angeles the night before and met these handsome and rascally types. And yeah, I mean, basically, I went to the show and a shard of metal just whizzed right past my eyes and um, that was Dylan playing the cymbals. And between that and the double kick pedal, I was kind of, it was love at first um, metal shard. Well, you might have been, something might have been awakened in you at this Barishi show, but you'd already had it in mind to have sort of a more loud, more aggressive record on this next one. And I understand that was kind of based on ramping up um, the attitude at your while you were touring your last record. Yeah, I think that there's an element of like survival mentality when you're on the road touring an album, and um, I think sometimes that can get put into the intensity of the set itself. And um, by the time I was I was at the end of um, touring the self-titled album, it was getting a lot heavier, and so I knew that I wanted to kind of bottle some of that energy up and put it on wax. This record is not autobiographical, you've been very clear to say, but it's sort of more focused on the emotional experience of the listener. And what are you hoping that the listener will come away from when listening to this album and seeing you perform it live? I think I just wanted to create a space where um, people could have a soundtrack for a certain type of catharsis and, um, you know, processing all the heaviness that we're going through. And there's nothing wrong with processing it by trying to be positive or uplifting or trying to be sad and kind of go deep into those emotions. But there is also a really important element of needing to air out your grievances and needing to let some of the rage out. And um, I think that it's actually a very un, it's a very nonviolent act to rage to rock music because you're you're releasing some of that energy that might build up and be toxic in another uh, form if you don't let it out. Just listening to like some gas. <laughs> just listening to this record and seeing you perform these songs live, I it, all this rage and frustration that we've had pent up over the last couple of years. It's nice to kind of let that out. I find myself singing slash screaming along <laughs> to these songs, and I can only imagine what it feels like to perform live. Yeah, I mean. Um I'm dead inside, so uh, if it seems like I'm raging, that is purely performance and adrenaline. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I mean, again, it's like when I was making this album, it was much more like writing and, and making a film. It's such a long-form process but that by the time you're at the end of it, you might not be feeling the things that you were feeling when you were making it. So I was very intentionally making something that was really a, an environment or a sound for other people to process while um, 
while, you know, I felt that really heavily when I was writing it, but now it's kind of like, it's just my, my job to serve the mozzarella sticks, onion rings, um, stuffed mushrooms, you know, the platter. Squeeze is oh. my, my fried food platter for the world. Your sampler poo-poo platter. Exactly. The things that give us gas. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you invited you some wonderful people to join you in the studio on this record. Can you talk about some of those guests? I'm thinking offhand, Meg Duffy of Hand Habits, who we love here. Yeah. Yeah, I was really lucky to, I mean, um, be quarantined in Los Angeles. And, of course, there's just an endless plethora of musicians there. So, um, you know... Kyle Thomas of King Tough and, and Meg of Hand Habits are my two housemates. So we were, you know, locked in a house together and made all three of our albums. And um, Ty, who's a really good friend of Kyle, Kyle's, he had just built a studio in Topanga. And, um, and we were, you know, talking about Judas Priest and talking about certain, like, analog metal tones. And we decided to go in and, and cut some of these songs. And so I, I recorded... You know, Dirk from Megadeth plays drums on some of them, and Ty plays drums on some of them, and, and we tracked a lot of it live and then kind of layered some stuff on top of it at Kyle's studio. What a collection of musical playmates that is. <laughs> yeah. So fun. The visuals on this album are as captivating as the music. I mean, you cover the covers, both a nod to the metal world, but also to your heritage on there. Can I know that your mom worked on some calligraphy on the record. Can you tell me a little bit about the visuals? Yeah, I was um, really lucky to connect with Andrew Thomas Wang, um, who is, of course, an incredible visual artist and um, has become a close friend of mine. And he draws a lot on Chinese folktale and ghost archetypes and kind of... Um, ancestral spirits and and we really connected on that theme and I knew that I wanted Japanese horror to be kind of a, a visual counterpart or inspiration for the album so when he and I got our heads together I started kind of um, diving deeper on my Zainichi ethnic background and which is very Korean and Japanese mixed so um, my mom did the Korean calligraphy on the front and the Japanese calligraphy on the back. It's absolutely beautiful, and the music also so incredible. Thank you so much for coming in and performing live. Thank it's you. It's music for both day and night. Our light, pleasure. Light and dark. Thank you so much. Next time when it's not COVID, you and I will throw elbows together in the pit. Absolutely. You are tuned in to KEXP. We're a listener-powered station. We want to thank all of our wonderful donors for making sessions like this possible. You can find out more about uh, set kexp.org and subscribe to our YouTube channel. There are literally thousands of sessions like this one that you make possible. Thank you so much for joining us live on KEXP Seattle. It's Sasami with us today. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.